Hi everyone, it's Carl from the Information Lab here. At the data school recently, we had a utility client come in and they had a load of billing data that they wanted to look at and visualize. But we came across a problem really quickly. Because utility companies in the UK don't automatically collect their bills, they're, they're based on individuals' readings. So those individuals who are, are the payers of the bill might not do that consistently every 30 days. So when we looked at our consumption end date, and actually if I drag that out with my right mouse button, I can jump straight to the day level, that we could see that the bills are being paid sporadically. But then if we looked at the number of days between those payments, let's just stick that on size, we'll see that they're different. So 31 days in January, 28 days in Feb. This is data I've just mocked up, 31 days again. So we wanted to show the average consumption over that time. But if we drop that as a line chart, we're only seeing that average consumption on the day of the 31st of January when I wanted to see it across. So we really want some bars to run between the start of the period and the end of the period to do that. Now, kind of my mind jumped straight away to a Gantt bar that would be able to use it in that way. That if we went from our consumption start date, again using at the day level, change our mark type to Gantt bar, which Tableau automatically does. And then if I um, just drag out my average consumption so I can see the different consumption levels throughout the months, I could just size by my consumption days. No. Gantt bars are drawing down. It's actually drawing down across your average consumption. And we're actually looking at the sizing by consumption days. So it's mixing two measures there. So how can I get my bars to run across from the 30 days? Well, the first thing I learned was that you can't actually drag out a second date and use it as a shared access. Because I thought if we can plot the two, we could use a path between those. But if I drop it down as a shared access, just disappears. Tableau doesn't work in that way. So that was that was frustrating, but we quickly worked out a solution to this. That what I could use is a measure that would use as, as shared access. So I could create this line between the start point and the end point. So I just decided to create uh, and count the number of days from a set start point. And obviously this could be configurable with a parameter if you wanted to do that. But we can look at the, the difference in days from your start point. So let's pick uh, data sets 2015. So it makes sense if I start from the 1st of January. And then I run through to when the consumption actually starts, or the billing period actually starts. So let's just call this our start date. Okay. And then I'm going to create exactly the same for the end dates as well. So I might as well just duplicate this guy. And let's just edit him to rename him. So this is going to be our end date. And just get rid of the word copy from the duplication. And I can just change my consumption start to my consumption end date instead. So that's good. Tableau's happy. I'm happy. So now we can build a chart. Well, we're measuring our average consumption. Um, this time I'm going to use my start day instead of um, my date. And I'm going to use my end day as a dual access. So as soon as, as a shared access, sorry. So as soon as we share that access, measure names and measure values come into play. If you don't know what measure names and measure values are doing, then listen to Emma White's video also on our YouTube channel as a way to look at that. And I'm just going to drop measure names back to a level of detail rather than actually being based on shape. I'm going to change my mark type to be a line, and then I'm going to break it down by our consumption ID or what would be your billing ID. And there we go, we get our lines. So I can now see across from day one through to day 30 that we've got that's our billing period in January and February and then we've got March. But it's tough without those dates. So I thought a nice way to work around this would be to grab our dates and put them into our tooltip. So now that I can see my dates within my tooltip and just with a quick edit, we could say uh, of our tooltip, we could say the our bill and give the bill ID um, started on a certain date. So that's around that value that Tableau is going to render within our tooltip. Just knock my started word off bold and end it. Again, grab the measure within the tooltip and drop that in. Again, take your text off bold. And that's just saying it's an average consumption. And we can just drop that in as well. We can get rid of the measure names and measure values because we don't need that. And let's just make that one color. 
and now I've got a tool tip that makes sense. So the bill one started in the 1st of January, ended in the 31st, and had an average consumption of 500. But you'd see your billing period over that time. And for me, that's a lot more of a representative chart. Just to avoid confusion, I would just not show the header there. All right, if you've got any comments, drop them into the comments box below in the YouTube video, or just get in touch, either at Data Jedi Ninja on Twitter, that's my account, or just drop us a line at the information lab. Thanks, everyone.